while Rowan and Martin's laughing was really drawing in some fun-filled laughs and what have you since it started in 1968. But the next year, 1969, we got another fun-filled show, but this one lasted longer than even last year. And that's why I'm wearing my cowboy hat, because it's got a little country twang in it. And it's going to be 55 years since this show first started. So get ready as I talk about, well, one crazy country show, and that's Hee Haw in this TV log right now. This is a Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews TV log. Hi, partners, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to as the Big D. Back again with another TV log. Today, I'm going to be tackling a very fun-filled show that is so outrageously funny, you'd get a whole lot of laughs from it. I mean, what would happen if you put together a good variety show with a little bit of country music in it? Easy. You got this show right here that is absolutely very, very funny. So now, without further ado, I bring to you the one, the only, Hee Haw. Hee Haw was a variety comedy show with country music and other, and other things, originally premiering on CBS in the summer of 1969. Uh, it later became a bigger success in syndication after CBS dropped it because of the, their rural purge. I'll get to that when I talk about it. This show was absolutely fun. Hee Haw was produced by Young Street Productions along with Gaylord Entertainment. It was inspired by Roe and Martin's Laughing, which had premiered the previous year on NBC. But it was centered on country music, re rural, rather than pop culture inspired humor, and with far less topical material. And it featured country music and humor with the fictional rural Cornfield County as the backdrop. It was hosted by country music artists Buck Owens and Roy Clark, who was one of the last few. People I knew from, well, I was familiar with from this show. I'm actually going to dedicate this in memory of him since he was the last star I, of the show I knew of who passed away. He passed away in November of 2018. But I will respectfully dedicate it to everyone else who we lost, like Buck Owens and others. Anyway, for most of its run, now the show was equally well known for its corn pone humor as for its voluptuous, scantily clad women dubbed the Hee Haw Honeys. In stereotypical farmer's daughter's outfits. Hee-haw's appeal, however, was not limited to a rural audience. It was a, it was successful in all of the major markets, including network-based L.A. and New York City, as well as Boston and Chicago. Other niche shade programs such as the Lawrence Welk Show and Soul Train, which started older and black audiences, respectively, also rose to prominence in syndication during the era. Like laughing, the show minimized production costs by taping all of the recurrent sketches for a season in batches, setting up in the cornfield, said one day, the joke fence on another, etc. At its peak, a show's worth of shows were recorded over the course of two separate week-long shoots, and then assembled in the editing suite. Only musical performances were taped with a live audience while a live track was added to all other segments. The series was taped for the CBS Television Network at its affiliate WLAC, now WTVF, in downtown Nashville, and later at Opryland, USA, in the city's Nelson area. The show was produced by Young Street Productions through the mid-1980s, and later produced by Gaylord Entertainment, which distributed the, the show for syndication. Now then... Now, this is kind of a little tough for me to figure this out and what have you. Hmm. Let me get to it. Oh, yes. The show premiered on June 15, 1969, which this is why I'm celebrating its anniversary early, because I've got something else lined up for Saturday night, that is. Because that's when I saw it. Now, I knew my grandpa watched it, though. 
Now, this show kind of, this show's intro with the donkey eventually scared me as a kid, unfortunately, which I'm going to tell you that. So please don't shoot me or hate me or what have you. I know that was a long time ago, but soon after that, I got over it, and I never was afraid of that intro again, even though despite it did change up in its final season. But I'll get to that later. Now, the network pick of CBS picked up as a last-minute replacement for the Smarter Brothers Come the Hour, a popular but controversial variety show that had been canceled amid feuds between the brothers and the network censors over the show's topical humor. Though Hee Haw did have solid ratings overall, it was dropped from the network in July of 1971 as part of the so-called rural purge, along with other shows like Green Acres and the Beverly Hillbillies. <sighs> yeah. However, uh, the primetime access rule had opened up a, an, op an opportunity for independent syndicated productions. So the producers of the show put together a syndication deal for the show, which continued in roughly the same format for the rest of its run. So apparently it did. Uh, at its peak, the show often competed against the Lawrence Welk show, which had also been canceled in 1971 from ABC. Anyway, but eventually it was a good move, and that's when it aired for the next 22 years. After a, an overall total of 26, 26 seasons produced, well, that were produced, and a total of 60, 655 episodes produced and aired, Hee Haw ended in June of 1993, but however, it continued on in reruns, uh, airing as a little something called Hee Haw Silver, and then soon it later got picked up by TNN, the Nashville Network. CMT also aired it later on. More recently, it was shown on the RFD TV Network. Uh, but now, of course, the show currently now airs on the Circle Network. Check your local listings if you have that channel. I don't have it, but but I do know of that channel, though. Uh, yes. Yes, Circle TV now currently has it. In spite of the popularity among its fans, the program has never been a favorite of television critics or reviewers. It did have a spin-off called the Hee Haw Honeys, but it was cited in a 2002 TV Guide article as one of the worst television series ever. Well, that's understandable. Anyway, now each week on Hee Haw, which is set in Cornfield County, a rural farming community in an unspecified state in the southern U.S., the show sketches mostly center around visits to local businesses in the county and the offbeat characters who live and work there. Now, aside from from Buck Owens and Roy Clark, there were also some others, well, big star names, including Gory Tab, Don Heron, let's see, Roy Acuff, Kathy Baker, not to be confused with the Kathy Baker you saw on TV's Picket Fences in the 90s, another series, let's see, oh... Archie Campbell was one, so was Tennessee Ernie Ford. You may know him best from the song 16 Tons. Uh, Grandpa Jones, one, one of my favorite care, one of my favorites on that show. George Lindsay, who actually reprises Goober character from the Andy Griffith show. Uh, there's Early Mandrell, Charlie McCoy, who would later go on to run the Hee Haw Band. Minnie Pearl, see Slim Pickens, Kenny Price. Lulu Roman, Junior Samples, Gerard Sartain, who would later go on to appear in the Ernest movies, you may remember. And there were a host of others. Now, of course, initially the house band was Buck Owens' own band, the Buckaroos. Uh, now... And there were many others. Now, 
Now, George Ritchie, who would later go on to marry Tammy Wynette, was the first music director of the series, but once he left to marry Tammy Wynette, Charlie McCoy, who I mentioned, was a harmonica player, or a member of the band, when he was not playing on recording sessions, became the show's music director, forming the Hee Haw Band. Yeah, really something. Now, even after Buck Owens left the show, a different country music artist would accompany Roy Clark as a guest co-host each week, who would give the episode's opening performance and participate with Clark in one of its popular segments, well, sketches, which I'll get to that in a, a little bit. Now, of course, Clark alone hosted the Hee Haw Silver, now, Hee Haw featured at least two and sometimes three or four guest celebrities each week, while most of the guest stars were country music artists. Now, a wide range of other famous luminaries were featured from actors and actresses to sports stars to politicians. Sheb Woolley, who you may know best for performing the Purple People here, was one of the original cast members, wrote the show's theme song. After filming the initial 13 episodes, other professional demands caused him to leave the show, but he returned from time to time as a guest star. Loretta Lynn, whom we sadly lost a year, well, almost two years now, was on the show, had made more guest appearances than any other, 24 times, and also co-hosted the show more than any other as well and therefore appears on more of the DVD releases for retail sale than any other guest star. Tammy Wynette was second with 21. From 1990 to 1992, once he actually made big, Garth Brooks appeared on the show four times. Really incredible. Now, Elvis was actually a fan of the show, but he wanted to appear, but unfortunately... He knew his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, would now allow him to do so. Yeah. He actually... Um, now, two of the Hee Haw Honeys actually did Elvis long before they joined the cast. Linda, Th Linda Thompson and Diana Goodman. Now, there were many other um, Hee Haw Honeys. I'm actually familiar with, Ganella Hutton, and, uh, let's see, who else? Oh, yeah, Misty Rowe. Let's see, um, Marianne Gordon, who would later go on to be, to marry Kenny Rogers. Oh, plus a lot of others. There's too many I mentioned, though, unfortunately. Now then, let's do, well, let's talk about the recur, well, the sketches and segments. Now, amongst some of the most popular segments, there was the comedic duet that, was, that would be featured every time. It would be performed by Archie Campbell with Gordy Tapp joining the chorus. In later seasons, a guest star would join Campbell or another cast member on the chorus. And the guest star's name would often but not always be mentioned somewhere in the song's verse prior to the chorus. Which uh, I hope I don't get this. Well, get copyright for this. I'll sing it for you. Well, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You men are, and pfft, you were gone. Yeah. Oh boy, that was really funny. I <laughs> love that one. Um, Don Heron did um, the K-R-O-R-N news as Charlie Farquharson. Really funny. Kind of like a spoof of the laughing news in a way, but without the same. I have the intro. <laughs> um, Lulu's truck stop, which had Lulu Roman running a truck stop. Georg Sartain was also in the sketch as the chef Orville and George Lindsay often appeared in the sketch as the, their goofy patron. Let's see, he all players where cast members take on some of the Shakespeare classics with some unexpected twists. Let's see. I'm trying to find most of them. 
Hmm. Uh, there was, um, the haystack where a male cat's mirror and one of the he highs talk about love issues while sitting at the haystack. Um, school scenes, I do, do believe I remember that. The Cole Haynes, I definitely remember that one. Which, of course, depicted of a family just sitting on an old-fashioned sofa in the parlor, which focused on Cousin Clem, played by Gordy Tapp, Cousin Junior, played by Junior Samples, Cousin Grandpa, played by Grandpa Jones, and Cousin Lulu, of course, played by Lulu Roman. After Samples' death, Mike Snyder, that's S-N-I-D-E-R, played the role of Cousin Mike. Now, I'm, now here's why I'm talking about. Pickin' and Grin, which, of course, featured Buck on guitar and Roy Clark on the banjo. Now, of course, after Owens left, a special guest star would join him. But I'm a picking and I'm a grin. Yeah. And then they start a playing. Yeah, they do um, a dueling by playing guitar and banjo, the instrumental to Cripple Creek, telling jokes and reciting wine liners. That was kind of like the cocktail party segment from Laughing. And then there's samples used car sales. Junior as a u samples as a used car salesman would try to palm off a major clunker. And if you like, just give him a call at BR549. That's BR549. Which, of course, that would be the name of a pretty underrated country group in the mid-90s. Another funny song. This was another popular one. It was Bloom, Despair, and Agony on me. Oh! <laughs> which it usually featured the well four male cast members. Originally, usually it was Clark, Tab, Grandma Jones, and Archie Campbell singing around in hillbilly garb, surrounded by moonshine jugs, and looking overly miserable. <laughs> the song began with the chorus, which all them sang with each one alternating in lip sync, a mournful howl after each of the first three lines. I just laughed so hard at the hell. <laughs> Woo! And and uh, the Gossip Girls, that was kind of, well, which, of course, that was actually uh, also known as repeating gossip or spraying, spraying it or something like that. Of course, that was a counterpart to Gloom, Despair, and Agony on Me. However, it featured four female cast members surrounding a wash tub and clothes ringers singing that. Singing that. Oh, boy. Really funny. He Haw Salutes. That was usually two or three times per episode. He also is selected town where our guest stars hometown and announced its population, which was sometimes altered for levity, at which point the entire cast would then pop up in the cornfield set shouting, Salute! <laughs> Let's see, the joke fans. That was really funny. Yeah, using. Two or three times during each show, a cast member usually hunting, standing in front of a high wind fence, told one liner joke and what have you. That was really something. Um, Archie's Barber Shop, yeah, with Archie as the Archie Campbell's a local barber, performing with Roy Clark. Yeah, um, um, he also did um, Doc Campbell. That was a funny one. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. And Gory Tab doing the, the general store. Let's see, um, Roy Clark was the head desk clerk at the Empty Arms Hotel. That was a good one. Goober's Garage, which, of course, had George Lindsay in his Andy Griffith show role of Goober. I do believe I remember that one. Oh, yeah, He Haw's All Jug Band, which had most of the female cast members. Lulu played Moonshine Jugs. And, um... Me, Pearl, introduced the sketch each week, loudly announcing, We're not playing now! And there she goes at the payout. Oh, and here's another one of my favorites. Hey, Grandpa, what's for supper? Yeah, Grandpa Jones is cleaning a window pane with no glass in it, as evidenced by Jones' hand dangling through the, the window pane as he recites the menu. And when the entire cat's off camera asks, that little question. He recites a dinner meal in poetic verse. How can he describe the delicious countryside meal? For example, chicken and biscuits, smart and rich gravy, and collard greens. Yeah, which the cast would reply approvingly, yum, yum. Sometimes he served a less than spectacular meal. 
which probably would be, for example, all out TV dinners. The way it's a casual reply. Yuck! Woo! Oh, and here's one the cornfield, which that was like Laughing's joke wall pit, which had cast members and guests are come out to tell jokes and one liners. Yeah, now, um, String Bean, I'll have to give his real name in a little bit. Um, well, he played the field scarecrow delivering one liners before being shouted did down by the crow on his shoulder after his murder in 1973. Yeah. And, well, was, well, was not, well, he was, well, after his murder, he was not replaced, but a wooden scarecrow was simply seen in the field as a memorial. So, soon we see the crow. Man, that's real. That's really something. Um, there's the Naggers in a G G E R S. Yeah, that featured Gory Tap and Ronnie Stoneman as Laverne and Ida Lee Nagger, a backwoods bickering couple inspired in part by the radio comedy The Bickersons. That's really funny. I remember that one. <coughs> um. Arlene Mandrell, who of course is kin to Barbara Mandrell, played the Cornfield County Operator. That was really something, which was of course similar to Lily Tomlin's Ernestine character. Oh. There were tons of other segments that were used. To me, admit, there were Amy Creers and what have you. Including the donkey, of course. There was also a puppet version of the donkey used later on that featured the puppet Shotgun Red, who hosted the TNN program. Let's see, what was it called? Oh, darn it all. I know it was um, a hit clip or something. Oh, I can't remember. That was a long time ago. Seriously, people. Uh, String Bean. His real name was David Aikman. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. Anyway, after this, there would go on to be lots of other things. Another thing that I would mention was the Hee Haw Gospel Quartet. That featured um, Roy, Roy and Buck and Grandpa Jones and one other. I can't remember, but... Yeah, they did a little gospel number. That was really good, too. At the end, they would kind of do a, a little bit of a slow goodbye song. Then they'd go to a catchier tune. Yeah, and then Buck's like, song, everybody! And Roy's like, we'll see you next week on Everybody Else Hee Haw! And that's that. That's the show. Now, in its final season, before they did reruns as Hee Haw Silver, it was changed, name was The Hee Haw Show. And that's when they dropped the donkey intro, and they used a different one, and a big different cast, where they used all sorts of modern things to appeal, like the bus stop, replacing the cornfield. Yeah, I'd say that didn't catch on, but I kind of would like it a little. But anyway, yeah. Now, Hee Haw can be found on DVD for pretty decent prices. You could probably find them maybe at the Dollar General. Or, or maybe Amazon. If, you, if they've got them for a decent price, you can check them out. Just in case if you don't have the Circle Channel. Uh, let's see now. There are, yeah, there's a few episodes of he available on to watch on YouTube. Not too many, but you can check it, check it out. There's also compilations and clips and stuff like that if you would like to check that out as well. So, anyway... I really think, while I didn't get to watch it all the time, I did catch reruns of it of late of early years. But anyway, Hee Haw proved to be so gosh darn funny. I'll go ahead and give you a look at some of the things that I do recall seeing. Here's a shot of Buck Owens and Roy Clark doing peeking in the grin with the cats. Here's a look at the original group of the call hangs, which include junior samples. Now here's a shot of one of the 
little skits of Room to Spare and Agony on me look like. And here's a look at the gals, some of the gals doing the, the teen gossip skits. Oh, there'll be some made. There'll, if you ever encounter Hee Haw, I would recommend you watch this show. Just don't let that donkey scare ya, which I'm sure it won't if why have you, but like I said, that was a long time ago. I'd rather not get on the subject or anything like that anymore. Thank you very much. Now, since I've been over that. But anyway, yeah. He hauls lots of fun. If you like Rowan Martin's laugh and or maybe other sketch comedy shows from long ago, or well, if you've seen some funny comedy shows that came out more recently, then I'd say you feel right at home with Hee Haw. You won't be disappointed. So anyway, what did you think of Hee Haw? You can let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel, make it grow, and make the views grow, please. Okay, and we'll have another video coming up soon. Because I've got more reviews coming up, which will include Cahill, United States Marshal, and the Stepfather remake coming up. And we'll have another TV log coming up this weekend with Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. So if you like this, check out some of these other country field videos I've done. In the upper left-hand corner is my ranking of my favorite songs from one of the guests who appeared in the 90s episodes of Hee Haw, which is Garth Brooks. Pick my favorite songs of his and put them in one big ranking. Or if you would like, you can check out my ranking of my favorite Johnny Cash songs, which I do after I after my review of the film Walk the Line. You can check out that in the upper right hand corner. Or go to the bottom left hand corner and see my TV log revisited on Rowan Martin's Laughing. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the TV log, then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya!